you know, this is why what we focus on is so important because we always have a choice. Again, it's not to say that other people are not acting like jerks. You know, sometimes they do because I know sometimes I act like a jerk. So I see it's possible that other people act that way. But we still get to, you know, we get to decide what we're going to focus on. And we'll hear tonight that one of the definitions of forgiveness from A Course in Miracles is very simple. It's to overlook or look past somebody else's negative character traits, negative personality traits, negative behavior. Now I suggest we do that after we take care of ourselves. We want to make sure that we're taken care of, that we're safe. Um, but once we're in a, in a position where we're not, no longer under threat, if that's actually what was going on, then we have a choice. What are we going to focus on now? We're going to continue to harbor on how could they do that to me, which quite honestly is a place I like to hang out uh, and take things personally and all of that. Uh, or are we going to overlook and look past the negative aspects of their personality or whatever and then make a new decision, make a new choice? It ain't easy. Simple, but ain't easy. Chapter 4, I talked about true love. Now we're talking about true forgiveness because there's a lot of misconceptions about what forgiveness is and how to do it. So we're going to move into that now. We talked the last few weeks about healthy boundaries, taking care of ourselves. It is, in my opinion, it is impossible to practice true forgiveness if, we, if we're not taking care of ourselves. In fact, it doesn't make any sense because we could just be putting ourselves back in harm's way with inappropriate people. Um, and, and remember, our boundaries protect us, but they also contain us because I know there have been instances in my life when I have been the inappropriate one, when I have been inappropriate with other people because I didn't have healthy functional boundaries. So boundaries come first, taking care of ourselves, and then we can do what I'm calling the work of true forgiveness here. You know, we're all basically driven by, actually in chapter five we said, the, the primary motivation for all our choices and decisions is we want to feel better. And the way I translate that into this discussion is we want to, you know, we, we, everything we do is motivated by this desire to survive, take care of ourselves, because nothing feels better than surviving, and or, our, you know, what we consider the pursuit of happiness. You know, we'll feel better, i.e. happy, if we get that thing that we think we want or need, or accomplish that thing that we want to accomplish. Now there's nothing wrong with any of that, but the problem is it can cloud our judgment and it can create a mindset which sees other people as the enemy. It's other people that are stopping me from getting the love that I want or need or the money that I want or need or the food that I want or need. You know, uh, it, it, we create, we create a, a worldview that says life is hard. We have to struggle to get what we think we want or need. And other people are often the obstacle to us achieving our goals, to getting where we want to be. So this idea that, you know, be kind for everyone is fighting the same hard battle. Um, I think that's a good way to begin to look at, at life. Even, you know, even if it's, um, you know, one of my favorites is uh, driving on the highway. And you notice, you can tell, I can tell, I think I can tell, I imagine that I can tell the kind of day that somebody had by the way they're driving home from work that night. You know, if you're on the highway at five o'clock, you can get a sense, you know, people who are weaving in and out of traffic, if there is traffic, totally out of left field, but uh, where I live, there's uh, an incline. It's about a mile and a half incline. And what happens is that the highway widens at that point. So it goes from like four lanes to like six lanes or five lanes. And that right lane is for the slow moving vehicles, the trucks that are having a really hard time getting up that hill. And what I notice is that some people use that as a shortcut, you know, and they think they're pulling one over on, and, and I've done this myself. So it's not, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually gonna poke fun at myself. But it's like that scarcity mentality. All these cars are in my way. 
and I got to find the fastest way to get home. Uh, otherwise, you know, whatever. I have this thing in my head that says, you know, they're in my way. It's their fault that I'm going slow. So I got to find a way around them. And I think I'm pulling one over on people. And there's often a cop that sits up there and waits for people to pull up in that lane, that right lane, passing traffic on the right side and, uh, and write some tickets. So I don't do that anymore. Not that I ever got a ticket, but. But what I'm saying is this shows the mentality. You know, look at the way people drive. Look at the way people do business in, in, in the world, not just in America. Look at the way people, um, you know, what we consider entertainment. You know, there's a lot of, you know, you go to a blockbuster movie and I love the entertainment industry and, and there's exceptionally talented people working in it. And a lot of the storylines are about the struggle when we have to overcome and other people, you know, particularly the bad guys, we have to eliminate them. We have to fight our way to the top. You know, look at pro, pro sports. You know, it's all about fighting and, and beating the other guy. That mentality makes it very difficult to look at other people with compassion, with understanding, and with ultimately forgiveness, in my opinion, okay? So, um, and then the other thing I like here is from A Course in Miracles, all attacks are called for love. You know, I've said this before, we talked a little bit about this the last couple of weeks, and it, and it was in the reading tonight, you know, when people act crazy, it's not because they're bad people. It's often because they're afraid. It's often because they're stressed out. It's often because something traumatic has happened in their lives. So if we can begin to look at those people, including ourselves, because I still have moments where I want to attack other people because I feel so afraid. Remember, another quote that I love from A Course in Miracles, frightened people can be vicious. Well, what if everybody who's vicious is really frightened? It's my position, and this is just my opinion, and I'm one person, and I have to admit, you know, um, I lead a pretty sheltered life, and so I know it's very easy for me to say this, you know, but it's my opinion that in our, that in our normal states as human beings, it's not in our nature to want to, want to harm other people and I know not everybody agrees with that some people think that there are just bad people in the world who do just want to harm other people and that may be true but what I'm suggesting is maybe if we approach the situations more from maybe they're frightened people maybe they're you know struggling to survive to take care of themselves take care of their family you know maybe they have trauma I mean I you know I have yet to meet somebody who hasn't had some kind of trauma in their lives. So, um, doesn't mean we give people a pass on their bad behavior. It doesn't mean we don't take care of ourselves. It doesn't even mean that we don't use force if necessary, because sometimes it is necessary to use force to restrain somebody else, uh, another person or another nation from in inflicting harm on other people. And, if we can begin to change the equation and begin to look at it and say, okay, so, I mean, ultimately, you know, if I can relate to somebody else's craziness and say, I don't agree with what you're doing, but I understand, I think I can understand why you're doing it, that can begin to change everything, in my opinion and in my experience. It may not always work, it may not be appropriate for every situation. But for most of the situations that most of us encounter in life, in our interpersonal relationships with people in our family, people at work, things like that, I just will invite you, and I'll invite myself at the same time, to begin to look at those conflicts a little differently. And to begin to look at the other person, perhaps as somebody who's really struggling, somebody who's really afraid, somebody who's, who's uh, really on unsteady ground for whatever reason. And again, you know, not to put ourselves in harm's way, not to give them a pass on their inappropriate behavior, but to begin to approach it from that place and then see what comes.